We're going to look at the early church. We're going to see what its life centered around. We're going to see the earmarks of the first century Christian church. And as we examine these earmarks, we can establish a pattern for our own church life. I isolated eight different earmarks. We're not going to look at all of them today, but we are going to look at them as we go through this passage. Eight earmarks of a genuine Christian church. You're going to see that they were genuinely converted, that the church was a teaching church, that they were a fellowshipping church, that they honored baptism and communion, that they were a praying church, they were a spirit-filled church, they were a generous church, and they were a committed church. You're going to see all of that in these few verses before us. And, and so as we begin, I want to begin with the most obvious. Notice in verse 41 how it says, Those who gladly received his word were baptized. Gladly received his word. That tells me that these are converted people. These are born again people. They gladly received the word of God. They welcomed God's word with joy and were saved. That's how you become a Christian. In the United States, I was looking up some statistics related to this. In the United States, depending on who's doing the survey, I see no less than 70, 75 percent of Americans who will answer to the name Christian. Many, many Americans consider themselves to be products of Christian belief. We'll even say that they attend church sporadically and all. They will consider themselves to be Christian. Many people go to church in the United States, especially during times of disasters, they will go to church, and, and many of us as Americans want to see our political leaders, especially our presidents, to have some form of faith. We want them to be people of faith, because this nation in its core is very religious, and, and in its core has Christian roots. And, and so many people, when asked the question, are you a Christian, will answer, yes, I am, even if they don't go to church, even if they really never read the Bible, even if they don't have any Christian friends and all, they will believe themselves to be Christian. But, but to know that you're a Christian requires that you gladly receive the Word of God. It's the Word of God that transforms people's lives. It's the necessity. We need to receive God's Word. We need to have it imparted to us and receive with faith this, this engrafted Word that we we might be able to grow through it. We need to be born again by God's word. And that's what we see here. They received gladly God's word. In John chapter 6, verse 63, Jesus said, It's the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. And so God's word was gladly received by them and they were born again. Peter in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 23 says, Having been born again, not by perishable seed, but imperishable, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So it's God's word that we receive gladly in order to be born again. These were not just a curious group of people or semi-interested people. These were genuinely converted people. These were people who weren't simply giving Jesus a chance. Just kind of giving him an opportunity to see whether it works or not to be a Christian. These were people who committed themselves 100% to him because they heard the message. The message of salvation. How they could be saved. How they could be born again. How they could have the Spirit of God moving in their life. And they knew that they needed a relationship with God. And these were people who were genuinely converted. These are people who were going to abide in his word. That's what it says in verse 42. And it says they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Not only did they receive the word of God, but they continued steadfastly in the word of God. Jesus in John 8, 31 said, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. It's not just showing an interest. It's being committed and abiding in the word of God. It's being born again and continuing with the Lord Jesus Christ that demonstrates true salvation. In Hebrews 3.14, the writer said, We become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. These are people who began the journey, continued the journey, and will complete that journey because they've been converted by Jesus Christ. The mark of a genuine church is that it is filled with people who gladly receive the Word of God, who are converted because God's Word is truth. I would ask you today whether you have gladly received the Word of God whether Jesus Christ really is your Lord and your Savior. You see, before I got saved, if you would have approached me as it occurred on a couple of occasions, and you would have asked me if I was a Christian, I would have answered in the affirmative. I would have said, yes, I am. Of course I am. I was baptized when I was six months old. 
I was actually four months old. I was, um, you know, I went to catechism classes from the time I was seven until I was 12 years of age, 13. I received my baptism, my confirmation. I believe the Bible's the word of God. I believe Jesus is the son of God. I believe in one God. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in heaven. I believe all of these things. And, and if you'd ask me, which some did, I'd say, yeah, I'm a Christian. Because I wasn't a Buddhist, I wasn't a Muslim, but I'd never really, really received God's word in my heart. I never had. I'd never been born again. And that didn't occur until I was 20 years old. And God finally convicted me and said, you aren't saved. You think you're a Christian, but you're not. And so I'd ask you the same question that was asked of me. Are you sure that you're born again? You see, these people here are they gladly receive the word of God. And as a result of that, their lives are transformed. A second thing we see is found in verse 42, and that is they continue steadfastly in the apostles doctrine. Now, when it says they continued steadfastly, the word steadfastly speaks of being steady under pressure. The church centered their attention on God's word. They became students of the word of God. You see, that's because genuine believers hunger for the word of God. A genuine believer is hungry for God's word. It's not something that they have once in a while. It's something that they hunger for. Even as Peter said, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Desire it. Have a hunger for it. Long for it. The way a baby longs to nurse. When my daughter Corinne was born, Marie being a nursing mother, began to nurse her and I can still remember on one occasion I went to work and Marie was there on the couch in our little front room and uh, she was nursing Corinne and I remember walking up and giving uh, Marie a kiss goodbye and kissing my baby Corinne on the head as she was nursing and I told Marie I'll be back at lunchtime because I only lived a few minutes away from where I was working so I could come home for lunch and and so I told Marie bye bye I'll see you when I get home for lunch and and I left you know before eight o'clock and I got home a little before noon and and when I came in the door Marie was still laying in the same place she had been three and a half hours before almost four hours and I remember walking in and she looks at me and her face is all hollow. I mean, this baby was sucking her dry, to be honest with you. And, and as I walked in, you know, she looks at me. She says, she won't stop nursing. She won't stop nursing. Watch what happens. And Marie pulls away from Corinne and Corinne starts screaming. You know, she's making all this noise. And Marie once again fixes her, you know, so she could nurse. I said, I can't believe this. I can't believe this. That baby would continue and continue and continue to nurse. And, and my prayer came true with her, by the way, because I said, you know, to the Lord, Lord, one day may she have a baby that does to her what she did to my wife. And Sophia's that way, my granddaughter, and I thank you, Jesus, every day. <laughs> 